So to review Snell's law, what we're looking at here is how the when you go from one medium to another, the speed of the light will change and then it will bend. So remember theta 1 here is the angle of incidence and theta 2 is the angle of refraction. And then N1 is the index of refraction for the first medium and then N2 is the index of refraction for the second medium. So let's start with this one as a practice. We have light um, entering oil from the air at angle 50 degrees. So this angle here is 50 degrees. Down here it uh, bends to 33 degrees. And uh, remember for air, the index for air is very, very close to one because the speed of light in air is very close to a vacuum. And we want to find out what the index of refraction is for oil. So go ahead and pause the clip and um, give this a try. When you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so we should get an angle of 1.4. And uh, I want you to go ahead and calculate the speed of light in oil. So go ahead and pause the clip again and uh, give this a try. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, n is c over v. And so we're looking for the speed in the oil, which is 2.13 times 10 to the eighth. And so what we talked about was how, you know, with the speed of the medium, the slower this is, the smaller this is the greater the index is. So the greater that the index is, the slower that speed is. And that's what that's uh, giving us there. Let's practice this one as well. We have light entering oil into water and oil is 1.65, water is 1.33. And we wanna find out what is the angle of refraction here? So we want theta two. And we also want um, what the speed of light is in oil. And we want the speed of light in water. And so, yeah, go ahead and pause the clip and give this a try. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play. Okay, so we should get 1.33, or I'm sorry, 71.87 degrees for theta 2. And um, the speed in oil is, for this oil, is 1.82. And then the speed in the water is 2.25 times 10 to the 8th. All right, now for this one, we want to find out the critical angle of incidence for gemstone. And uh, remember with this, right, as the light comes in, the critical angle here is where theta 2 would be 90 degrees. But what happens instead is that the light stays in the gemstone and reflects inside. <coughs> so um, let's go ahead and give this a try. Don't worry about part B of this. <coughs> Um, what is the critical angle here? So yeah, go ahead and pause the clip and give this a try. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. So for theta 2 being 90 degrees, uh, 2.45 is where we start in gemstone. This is N1. N2 is air. Um, and then I'll be signed of 90 there. So we should get an angle of 24.09 degrees. Um, so if we had even had a sharper angle... <clears throat> you know, let's say an angle like this, it's gonna just stay inside. But if we have a shallower angle, it can make it out. And that's where theta two is gonna be pretty large there. Now dispersion is where the refractive index is just slightly different based on wavelength. So as light comes in, it will bend just a little bit differently based on the wavelength of light as it comes in. and so. Um, that's where we get the rainbow of colors through the prism. Redshift is where, let's say this is Earth, and here is a star. And let's say that this star has to be, uh, is, is moving away from us. If you remember with the Doppler effect, as light goes out, light spreads out slightly as you know it goes away from you right and so what happens is when earth receives these wavelengths of light they're spread out they're towards the red end and um, the wavelengths look longer than they actually are from the sun and we know are from a star and so we know that the star based on its temperature should be producing a certain amount of light and so when we receive that and it's shifted um, we know what the chemical makeup is and so we can figure out you know we know what the star uh, the reaction is we can see that the uh, you know the motion is away from us and um, now if we were in a planet over here another planet and the lights coming at us 
um, it would shift towards the blue because the wavelengths are all smaller. With smaller wavelengths, we would say, okay, you know, it's uh, shifting the other way, and we know it's moving towards us. Okay, now we're also going to want to practice <coughs> mirrors. On this one, this is a concave mirror that we want to practice, and um, let's see if you guys can remember how to draw it. So you're going to draw, calculate, and name. So give this a try, and um, go ahead and pause the clip. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so we have our parallel ray through the focus, focal ray, and our image shows up here. And um, that would be real, inverted, enlarged. And our DI should come out to be 60. It's located at 60 meters. The common mistake here is to forget that it's 1 over di that we're solving for, so we have to cross multiply, then divide, and then solve for di, which is uh, 60. The magnification is negative 2, which means it's twice as big and upside down. And the height is negative 30, going from 15 uh, centimeters to 30. All right, so I want you to also go ahead and draw, uh, go ahead and draw a circle. Go ahead and draw a line through the middle. Go ahead and draw a dot for here, dot for here. This is the center. This is the focus. And then you can draw a line coming around here, and here is our object. So go ahead and draw the ray diagram for this, and uh, when you're ready to check, you can hit uh, play. So go ahead and pause it, and then when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, so you'll have the ray coming in parallel, and then um, it's going to reflect out where the tail would take you to the focus, and... Um, then we aim for the center, but then it comes straight back out, so the rays are diverging, so then we would trace them backwards, and the uh, image would show up here, and so this would be virtual, upright, and reduced, smaller, and that's always what we get with the um, convex mirrors. We always get real or virtual, upright, reduced. So let's put some values to this. Let's say that the focus is negative three centimeters and the object is two centimeters. And we want to find the image distance. So go ahead and pause the clip and um, calculate this. And when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so one over di plus one over d over is one of focal length. And we should get uh, negative 1.2 centimeters as our image distance.